Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Lee Halliday, and today we are going to be building a vanilla JS to-do app. Now I love React, most of my videos have been about it, but one day you're gonna get a job where you're not using React, and it helps to know the underlying technologies, how to work with the DOM, how to query elements, how to add events, outside of the context of React, outside of any context of a framework. We're just working in JS and the DOM. So I've got this um, Parcel.js app set up. Now Parcel.js, it's very simple to get up and running. It's basically a replacement for configuring Webpack and all of that stuff. So I have literally one dependency, dev dependency of Parcel. It's got a script that I've already run that's serving the index.html. So this is as pretty much as bare bones as you get. It's got a script tag pointing to this TypeScript file. And here's where we're going to be spending almost all of our time. So right now you can already see it's console.logging ready. So what I want to do is basically, I want to know when I can get started and start adding this to-do app functionality. So we're going to add an event directly to the document that's going to tell us when the DOM content is loaded and ready to go. So we're going to say document.addEventListener and we're going to listen for DOM content loaded. And when that event fires inside of this function, what I want to do is basically find a div container that's going to act as sort of the container for the rest of our to-do app. So it doesn't exist yet, so we're just going to hop over here. We're going to add a div with a class of to-do, save that, come back, and put that into a variable. So we're going to say container is equal to document.querySelector. So we're going to find that using its class selector of to do. And why don't we just console.log the container to make sure that it's working. And you can see here it did find our to do. Cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to call a function called to do. Sorry. What the? Oh my God. <laughs> Make him angry. Okay. There we go. So we're going to call to do passing the container. To do doesn't exist, so we're going to create it out here, and it's going to receive the container of type element, just like this. So inside of here, I now want to sort of add a bunch of HTML content to that container, and there's a ton of different ways to do this. Because we're going to add a whole bunch at the beginning, just this big chunk, I'm going to add it using the simplest way. So we're going to say content, sorry, container dot inner HTML is equal to so what we're going to do is add an h2 tag that says to do like that. And if I save it, you can see that it's already working. It's adding that. So inside of the to do, we're going to have an unordered list, which is going to be where we add all the to do items. We're going to have an h3 that tells us how many of these to do's are done. So it's just going to start out at zero. And then we're going to put a form. And this form is going to have an input of type text and we're going to give it a name of text, the, the to do text and save that and a button. So this is going to be a button of type submit and it's going to have the text add. So let's save that. Here's sort of the shell of our to do app. I can say chores, add it. Now the default functionality of the form is to submit it and reload the page. So we're going to have to override all of that. But what I want to do now is basically set up a few variables that contain the DOM elements that we're going to sort of manipulate and add events to and stuff like that. So we're going to start by putting the form into a variable. And up here you saw that I queried sort of at the document level. From now on, I'm going to be inside of the scope of my container. So I'm going to say selector so that I'm not searching the whole DOM, I'm just searching inside of this div. And I'm going to search for a form. And because I'm working in TypeScript, I can give it the type hint of what I'll be finding with this query. So I'm going to say HTML form element like that. So now we're just going to find a couple more variables. So the next is the list query selector of type UL. And the TypeScript type for that is HTML U list element. And lastly, I am going to put this H3 of how many done inside of a variable as well. So container.querySelector, 
Uh, this would be HTML heading element and we'll find that with H3. So I'm just using HTML selectors here because I'm inside of the context of this container. It's pretty safe because I know sort of what I'm putting inside of that. Okay, so the first thing we we're going to do now that we have all the variables set up is we're going to add an event to the form listening for when it's submitted so we can sort of override that functionality, stop it from submitting and grab that text and add it to our list of to do's. So we're going to say we're going to add an event listener and that's going to be type submit. So that will call this arrow function here and we'll receive the event which will be of type event and what we can do with this is call prevent default on that. And that will stop it from submitting the form. So you can see it sort of does nothing right now. I'm hitting enter. It's not submitting the form. And now we can move on. So what we want to do is we want to grab this value of chores. So normally in React, we'd be storing this in state and we'd just grab it from there. But in vanilla JavaScript and the DOM, we're going to be reaching into the HTML itself and grabbing its value. So there's a number of ways to find this input. Um, a cool way of doing that is basically accessing the forms elements. So we're going to say const input is equal to the form. So that would be this variable here representing this HTML. And we can say find me the elements and here I can access it by its name. So see I have the name here text. I can use that to grab the element. So if I gave it another name like to do or whatever you would just swap to do to do in these two. And because it doesn't know um, right now what type it is I'm just going to give it a, a hint that this is an HTML input element like that. So with this input we could say console.log and get its well, if we just look at the input, we get chores. So that's the actual DOM node. But DOM nodes have all sorts of properties and, and functions you can call on them and stuff like that. So this one has value to get its value, chores. So now we get the actual text. So I'm going to take that text and call a function called add item, which doesn't exist, but we're going to go create that right now. And then after that item, I want to just reset the form back to its original state. So the form has a function on it called reset that I can call. And that will basically just set every input back to what it was at the beginning. So let's create this add item function. It is going to receive the item text and that will be of type string. Okay, so now we're going to be adding some HTML um, manipulating the DOM, but we're going to do it in a different way than this inner HTML. Um, the reason I'm doing it differently is because I want to add events to it and it's easier to sort of create them one by one, the elements, because then I can just add an, an event to it right away. So the first one we're going to create is basically an LI to go inside of this UL. So we're going to say this is the item and we're going to say document.create an element of type li. So this gives us a, a DOM node, an HTML um, li element. And what we can do here is basically take this item and I want to set its content. So ton of ways we could do this. We could say inner HTML is equal to something. There's also inner text. You can set it to something. But what we're going to do is we're going to an append a child to this DOM element. So we're going to say append child because the DOM node are trees. So basically each node of the tree can have multiple children. So we're going to be adding one child to that DOM node. And the type of child we're going to add is a text node. So create text node. And this will just be a piece of text. So what text are we going to add? We're going to add our item text. So if I save this and run it, it doesn't do anything yet. We've created the LI, but we haven't sort of put it anywhere. We haven't inserted it into the DOM node. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our list and we're going to append a child to this and we're going to append the item. So now when I come back here and I type chores 
add it, it now adds that li to the ul. So we're starting to make some progress in our to-do app and it's, it's a heck of a lot different than React, no? It took me a while to get back into this DOM headspace because this is more of along the lines of what I used to work in before React. Um, anyways, enough of the history. Next thing we're gonna add is a checkbox to basically check off when this to-do is done. So we're gonna say const check is equal to document.create element of input. And then we can set its um, type to checkbox. And then what we're going to do is basically add this to our item. So item.append child, um, the check. So if I were to come here now, chores, we get this nice checkbox here. But what I wanna do is when I check that, I wanna update this to one. When I uncheck it, update it back to zero. So the way we're going to do that is we're gonna add an event listener to our checkbox for whenever it changes, we want to call a function that's gonna recount how many are done. So we'll, oh man, there we go. So when the checkbox changes, call recount, we're gonna create recount right here. And what we're going to do is basically count how many items are checked. So we're gonna just put this in a variable called count. And what we're going to do is take our list, our UL, and we're gonna query all of the items in it that are an input that's checked. So that's gonna give us, a, what does it give us back? A node, a node list, basically an array. So on that array or node list, we can call it length. And then what we can do is basically access our done and we can set its um, text content. And what we can do is we can say that it is equal to count done. Like that. So whenever I add a chore, I check it off, uncheck it. It's recounting every time, but it's pretty efficient because it's always just querying inside of the list. So it's got a very small scope that it's working with. <laughs> So I wanna be able to remove one of these items now. So for that, we're gonna create a button. So document.create element of type button. And this button is going to have text content of delete. And remember, we have to add it to the item, otherwise it's not going to show up. Append child of button. So if I were to come here, chores, delete but it does nothing because it doesn't have an event attached to it yet so we're going to come back and we're going to add an event listener and this would be of type click and sort of when it's clicked what we're going to do is basically we want to tell the list to remove this current item from it so yes we could do it in line right here um yeah why, why not why don't we just do it right here I was gonna create another function, but uh, it's so small that it probably doesn't matter. So what we can just do is we can say, um, so we're gonna access our list and we're gonna tell it to remove a child. What child do we wanna remove? The item, like that. And when it's been removed, why don't we do a recount? Because if that was a checked item, that would change the count. So we're gonna come back here and we're gonna say chores clean to, when I delete one, delete to, it's always recounting as it's removing the node from, from the DOM tree. So we're pretty much done at this point. Oops, don't know what happened there. We're pretty much done at this point, but what I wanted to show you is sort of why I set it up the way I did, because we can easily come back here now and have multiple to-dos on the same page. We could have three of them if we want to. And it won't work out of the box right now because we are finding them one at a time. But what if we approached it this way? If we instead find query selector all, and then we iterate over them. So this would give us the uh, container. And then we'll call to do, passing the container for each of them. Now it's gonna create one of these to-do functions 
for every single to-do div that it finds on the page. And because everything's scoped to within the query or within the container or lower, like within the list or something like that, um, we're safe. Everything's scoped correctly. All of these variables are scoped correctly within this to-do function. So we can add chores to this one. We can call down, we can call mom down here, call dad down here, and then, um, I don't know, do work or whatever. And it keeps them all separate, very nice. Cool. So that's how to do a vanilla JS, no framework at all to do. And we manipulated DOM, we um, created elements, we removed elements from the tree, we we added them like by a pending child. There's also prepend child if you want it to show up at the top of inside of that DOM node versus the bottom. So we played with a lot of um, just the core of what makes the web uh, what it is. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, talk to you soon. Bye.